Welcome to our final class. In our previous three classes, we've talked about the sounds of nature and the environment and the way they affect our hearing and our appreciation of classical music. In our second class, we looked at percussion instruments themselves, the noises they make and the way percussionists activate them. Then we talked about narrative, about storytelling, about the way all of those sounds interleave to create a musical statement. Now we've arrived at the point where we can talk about a percussive language. Where are we with the language of percussion and what might happen as it evolves into the future? When we think about what percussion instruments may do in the future, when we think about what their, where their language may go and how it might evolve, it might be worth starting by looking backwards just for a little while. The first thing I'd like to say is how recent the art of solo percussion playing and even percussion playing in the Western sphere at all is. Of course, we know that percussion playing has existed in traditional cultures for millennia, but the first percussion solo was made at the end of the 1950s. It is, in fact, younger than I am. So the entire percussive art has grown up in the Western contemporary scene in solo percussion music over the space of my lifetime. So that means that we have a kind of concise history we can trace. We start with those really early pieces, each of which tried to be a kind of entire universe. It was as though Noah had constructed the earliest percussion setups. There was one of every instrument or two of this species of percussion instrument, and, and every setup was huge. Every setup tried to do everything. Every setup tried to be a kind of mini percussion orchestra. At a certain point, that just simply saturated people's abilities to, to track. And every piece started to sound kind of remarkably alike every other piece. So probably in the late 1970s and the early 1980s, composers posed this question. If we don't use the entirety of the percussion world in every piece, perhaps what we should do is to pick an interesting part of it and develop it, to take a part of the language of percussion instruments and make it more sophisticated, deepen it, richen it in some way. Then later in the 1990s, composers turned to the use of musical technology, the use of computer-modified sounds, amplification, pre-recorded backing tracks of all different kinds so that percussion served as the principal part of that language, but was amplified and extended through various technological means. Another set of composers saw percussion as a crossover bridge to popular music and sought to imbue new percussion com compositions with references to pop music. I played in an ensemble for 10 years, the Bang and the Can All-Stars, so some of my closest friends in the world were made during that period of time. And the question we explored was, how is this language of contemporary music like the language currently being developed in the sphere of pop music? So crossover attempts have been made. So you see now a cross-fertilized language that began with an attempt to be everything at all, all times and is and has led us to this point in the early decades of the 21st century into a world where people are working in very specialized projects that have an, an enormous amount of commonality with each other, but are spreading outward as though they are spokes from a center, as though they are reverberations from a big bang.